Our family has raided the piggy bank and we're now traveling the world to experience, up close and in person, all the natural wonders and distinct cultures that our kids are studying in school. We're still here in San Miguel de Allende, Mexico, the hot spot that Travel and Leisure calls the best city in the world. Today, we're taking you on a tour of some of the city's top eateries. And if you're expecting a standard collection of Mexican restaurants, you're in for a tasty surprise. In a city that's long been a haven for expats, where about one out of five residents isn't even Mexican, the food scene here is just as diverse. So to truly experience the flavor of SMA means embracing the varied cuisines that help put this city on the global culinary map. Our very first restaurant is going to be an Italian place, and it's called MoMA, and it came highly recommended by our Inspirato Concierge. And I know what you're thinking. We're in Mexico, and we're going to an Italian restaurant, but stick with us. We're going to explain. Something really cool about San Miguel are all the churches that they have around town that it's really surrounding, and we'll show you more about that in our other episode. But that means that there are a lot of rooftop restaurants, and so we have the best views. I got their namesake, La Moma. It has the pasta, which is the Italian flair, and then the beef on top is Puntas de Filet, which is a filet of beef, and that is the Mexican cuisine flair. Mmm, such an interesting and unique combination. The sauce is a cream sauce, and it's got a big poblano flavor to it. So it's really good. I really, my mouth can't tell. Am I eating Mexican food, or am I having Italian? It's so confused. I've got some carbonara. Fuck. We got the salmon encrusted with pistachios and some roasted veggies. Yum, that looks mm -hmm. delicious. All right, babe, what did you get? I'm digging into the signature dish here, and it is a fettuccine fradiavola, which is a shrimp fettuccine in cream sauce. We have almonds and all sorts of amazing, like Parmesan and prosciutto, and just incredible Italian goodness in here, and I can't wait to dig in, finally. That really hits the spot. That is delicious Italian food. Having it in Mexico is absolutely mind-blowing. And how interesting is this? We're having tequila cocktails with our pasta. I got the Argento, and it has a watermelon lychee flavor to it. It's really good. Oh, yeah, and some tequila. A little bit of tequila in there. Hola. Mezcal and pineapple for me. So smoky. I'm so glad that we were able to get this table on the rooftop because it does get pretty hopping. Everybody wants to come here and see the views of the church. In fact, San Miguel de Ande has the number one rooftop restaurant in the world, and we definitely covered that in our previous episode. We're actually stuck, not surprisingly. So we're gonna hit the road and get to the next place. It's pretty cool that every evening they block out the streets that are surrounding the town square so that it's pedestrian only. And tonight we are having a Latin comfort food. We're going to Tene Kitchen and Bar. This is beautiful in here. So it's the hotel restaurant, but a lot of the locals like it because one, it's beautiful, it's a historical building, and the food is excellent. They already brought a little uh, appetizer out for us. It's like a pate, and it's made out of zucchini seeds, tomato, and habanero. And then we have these tortilla chips. You don't eat the corn, that's just there to hold the chips up. Mm. Our cocktails just came out. I got in a hibiscus margarita. It's tasty. I've actually had hibiscus margarita before, a lot. But Amanda got one that's super interesting. It's called sour soap, which is another name for, what is it? Guadabana? I'm gonna look this up, hang on. Guanabana. And it's the fruit of a tree called Anona muricata. It's a broadly flowering evergreen tree native to the Americas and the Caribbean. So give that a try. Mm. <laughs> it's delicious. Wow. What's it taste like? Anything particular? Watermelon. Quite a bit. Yeah. I love the rim on it too. Here, give it a try. Holy cow, that's good. It does taste like watermelon. And watermelon is one of my favorite margaritas, one of my favorite flavors. That is phenomenal. Ooh. 
one of the reasons that San Miguel is such a culinary hub is that so many chefs want to come down here and start restaurants and make names for themselves. And so many of them do. That is really yummy. And I definitely taste like an habanero. This building, this room is so beautiful. It is Casa 1810 Parque Hotel. It's a boutique hotel and it has some historical background to it. The property is built on the site of an old tannery and the original foundations were preserved and restored for its construction. So there's a lot of old mixed in with the new and the restored. Little bit of everything in the menu. I definitely see some Mexican influence in here, but for the most part, it is Latin. And you gotta reiterate again, like the nature of restaurants in San Miguel, the Last time we were here, last year, some of my favorite restaurants had nothing to do with Mexican cuisine. In fact, my favorite was probably the Peruvian restaurant, La Parada. Fantastic. That restaurant and all the others we visited the first trip to San Miguel are in our other episode. We're making sure to put a link for you to see it. Salmon ceviche is here and it also has ribeye. Yeah, this dish has a little bit of everything. So we have salmon, ribeye, and it tastes like a citrus soy sauce is the base. I wasn't expecting that. The ribeye is dehydrated, so it's crunchy. It's like a steak cracker. It's actually very, very tasty. It goes really well with the salmon and the saltiness of the sauce. And we just got a few dishes for everyone to share. Amanda, you wanna try? Oh wow, that's amazing. And we also have choripan, which is a chorizo sausage with bread. It's kind of like a brat or a hot dog, but chorizo, so very latin -y flair. And it's got cheese in there too, and uh, almonds all over the place. I'm gonna dip it in the sauce they have on the side. Mm. The bread is like a cheese bread. Looks good. That's some very hearty bread. But very true to the restaurant's description, it's comfort food. Talk about a big leg. This is pork camaro with pabil. Pabil is kind of a sauce, so it has a lot of different seasonings and peppers, and achiote is one of the main peppers that they'll use in that sauce. We also have an habanero sauce on the side, so I'm gonna be using that. Oh, it's right off the bone just fell right apart. Now, I like it so spicy. Oh, it's already spicy, I can just taste it. <laughs> I'm gonna put just a dab. Really delicious. The pork is perfect. Get in there, get a bite. Mmm, oh. that's amazing. It'll be good on a tortilla, too. It would be, it did come with tortillas. It's good. What is it? What is it? That's a big pig leg. I make a lot of pork butt at home, but I bet this is pretty good. Yeah, I dig it, but I want some of that sauce. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah, it really just, just falls apart. Look how stringy that is. Well, I think that's all she wrote. We're pretty stuffed, so uh, we're gonna call it a night here. Head back to the place and see you at the next restaurant. You know, constantly jutting our family around the world isn't cheap, and the money we put into it doesn't come easy. That's why we protect our investment with a travel insurance policy that covers most of the gremlins that can pop up. Illnesses, emergencies, cancellations, inclement weather, natural disasters, these are just a few of the things we worry a whole lot less about knowing that we're covered. Most of us use aggregator websites to shop for the best deals on hotels, flights, rental cars, and experiences, so why limit research into good travel insurance to a single carrier? Artie is a travel insurance marketplace where anyone can generate a quick quote that compares coverage and premiums for over 30 plans from top carriers like John Hancock and AIG Travel Guard. If you have an upcoming trip that you're sinking some good cash into, or if you spend a big chunk of the year traveling like we do, take three minutes to see if you can protect your investment. Visit followabc.com slash travel insurance or use the link in the description below for details and to run an arty quick quote. I'm excited about this place because a chef in town told us this is her favorite restaurant and it's Mediterranean Greek to be specific. We're really excited about that because we're going to Greece in the spring. So we're gonna taste some of the food in Mexico. I'm gonna start off with a little starters here. So we've got this panan bread and three different dipping sauces. One is a beet puree and a yogurt, which I think is gonna go well with it. And this third one is called oil seeds. And it looks like it's just oil with some seeds. Mmm, that yogurt's really thick, really rich. Gotta try more of the beet, because that one 
It's more subtle. Oh. Phenomenal sauces. The bread is outstanding. Mm. So soft and pillowy. Smoky peas, mezcal. That's good, huh? I could drink a few of these. only like the finest of these, the freshest, the best, the coldest iced water. We're starting off with these beautiful zucchini flowers. I can't wait for the kids to try them in particular because it's a fun little food and I know they're going to think it's delicious. Their first time trying it. Is that actual leaf? Yeah. That is good. Now I've got to try it, but I am going to add a little bit more to it. Uh, there's a little yogurt sauce on the outside. No, that's ricotta. That's ricotta on the outside, and I think that's what it's filled with as well. And then there is a bruschetta uh, that I'm also going to pile in there. Just like, well, I don't even know how to take the first bite. With it being a zucchini flower, it has a little bit of a squash um, flavor and a little texture in there too. But I love it with the Mars Capone or ricotta. I'm all over the place, huh? Tastes like something from my childhood, I'm not sure what. I think Amanda's right, it's fried zucchini. That's what that tastes like. That's why I remember from childhood. We've had so much of that, but spot on. And it makes total sense. I had a lot too growing up in the Midwest. So excited about our entrees. We have a manchego risotto. Smells phenomenal. And rack of lamb. It's Brooklyn's favorite. I'm gonna make her plate first. Gosh, she loves me so much. It looks so good. That seasoning, I had a little taste around the lamb. Spot on. Here you go, little bean. Do you have a fork? Or... Delicious, delicious, delicious. So good. So far, this is absolutely my favorite that we've had so far. Top of the list. That was a fantastic meal. All of it. It was really good. And I have to say, if I didn't know in advance, I would never even guess that it was a Greek meal. This is quintessential SMA. Like you can just go somewhere and you have a very unique kind of dining experience. It's gonna be delicious no matter what, but it's something that's very neat, unique to this city. Ah, really enjoyed it. We're getting out of here though, come on. Talk about a hodgepodge of food. We're going to a French and Japanese restaurant, Estoril y Mirasaki. And it has a really beautiful colorful door. So it's two different restaurants, Estoril over here and Mirosaki in there. But we all sit in the same dining room. Hey, they're starting us off with a nice little amuse-bouche. First one I think we've had in San Miguel, actually. And it's a salmon croquette. It looks really good. It looks crunchy on the outside. Mmm. Super thin outer shell, and it's very crunchy. It's almost like the equivalent of a, an egg shell. Just biting into one. Is it jamon or salmon? Jamon? That explains it. I'm like, that doesn't taste like salmon. That's phenomenal. So this is the Estoril side, but we are actually only going with the Murasaki side of this restaurant, and we're doing Japanese only tonight because we've heard that it is the best sushi in San Miguel. We have to find out if it's true. Cocktail time. Look at this green machine bad boy. This is called the Green Estoril. It's mezcal, ancho reyes, papil, and it is piña. It's gotta be really well balanced. Mmm, that's so good. It's like a green chili cocktail almost. And then the mezcal with the smokiness really balances well. You gotta try that. Cucumber though, too. I have mezcal, red fruit, and Campari. And a little bit of lime. It's delicious. Our lucky day, they have two for one rolls. So our first roll, we got the salmon crunchy roll. Chopped up salmon and uh, what are those called? The panko flakes or? Panko flakes? Panko flakes. That's not a bottle. Fishkin flakes on top. That's what's going to make it crunchy. And then there's some fresh veggies like cucumber inside. Now that sauce that's in it actually surprised me. There's like a creamy texture and flavor to it. It's, um, and it has a mild poblano creamy flavor inside of it. I wasn't expecting that. Colt got a little bit bored because he's not using a device at the table. And so he started using origami, which he is a pro at. Look at this and I was like, I wonder what I could make out of this. So I made it into a square. First, I made Houdini the dino. And then I made a swan 
And we're not bored anymore because now we have more food. We got a roast beef roll. I wanted to get it because it was unique, it seemed different, and I was intrigued. So there's no fish in there. It is just roast beef in there. No complaints. Honestly, not a ton of flavor, but I like it. I like it because it's different, it's new. I'm glad we got it. It's so good. It has fewer layers, less dimension than the other roll did, but I kind of like that because I'm a purist, you know? Also, I really love sushi rolls that are small and truly bite-sized instead of those that take 10 minutes to bite through while you're trying to film an episode. I don't know about you, but I want to hit another restaurant. See you tomorrow. And our final restaurant on this tour is a great place. It's the newest restaurant in San Miguel, and it is known for their grilled steaks, like Canadian beef and Wagyu from Australia. This is Soyano Dieciocho. Wow. Holy smokes, we are off to a very good start. Stunning views, perfect table, and we had a mixologist come to our table to take our direct order. So we're in for some treats. The rooftop restaurant scene in San Miguel is unrivaled. In fact, they have the number one rooftop restaurant in the world right here. We covered that one in one of our previous episodes from our trip here last year. But as you can see, yeah, it's just, you can't beat this. Wow, they brought their steak selection out. Oh my gosh, two huge trays, a lot of steak. That's a lot of meat. I didn't even know what I ordered and I ordered the right thing because look at this setup. I just wanted pineapple and mezcal in a cocktail. That has gotta be rosemary. It smells so good. Ooh. Outstanding. Yeah, that pineapple is like, that flavor is killer. It's like more than pineapple. It's fermented pineapple. So it's like, here comes Phil's cocktail. Not nearly as exciting as mine. So I got a mezcal with grapefruit. It's gonna be hard to drink with this huge ice cube in here. It's sparkly, effervescent. It's really good with a spicy rim. I think the black latex gloves give them kind of like a bodyguard or a hitman vibe, which goes really well with the steakhouse thing. It's time this steak is here and we're gonna have a flame presentation. So they're heating up the mezcal, because usually steaks like this might have like a, a flame cognac, but of course we're in Mexico, we're doing mezcal. Woo! What an incredible presentation. I would like this piece, please. This is a Wagyu tomahawk from Australia. <laughs> And we got the classic potatoes for our side. It's like eating butter steak. It just melts through. It's so good. The chef's recommendation for a steak this size is medium because it's so big, it, it, there's still gonna be some parts that are rarer on the inside. Polished off that steak, but we're not done yet. They took it away because there's still something extra special on it. They've taken the fat on the bone and fried it up and made chicharrones with it. So they've also brought some tortillas and there's avocado on the bottom. So this is our second meal that we're having, pretty much. Oh, I want a really crispy one. Mmm. And it's extra salty. So good. It's like bacon. I think I might like that better than the steak. How crazy is that? But you have to order the steak to get that part. Chicharron would normally just be fried skin, but this one's like fried carcass. It's all the stuff that was left on the bones. The meat, the fat, probably no skin at all, but it's so salty. And the little accoutrement that they put on there, the, the guacamole, a little bit of lime. This is phenomenal. And a great way to end this episode, a great way to end this experience. We're leaving tomorrow, so it's a great way to end this entire trip. We've got so much cool stuff coming up. The bell is ringing though, it's almost midnight. Cinderella's gotta get home. So we'll see you in the next episode. Cheers. We are the Lockwoods. Aaron, Phil, Reagan, Brooklyn, and Cole. We're traveling the world to experience up close and in person all the natural wonders and distinct cultures that our kids would otherwise be consuming only through textbooks and TV. We think it's a better way to learn and we're working hard to fund this little experiment in the hope that our kids will grow up wiser, kinder, and more grateful for the beauty of our diverse planet and its people. 